Let's recap what we discussed yesterday about the Red Wing Blackbird's behavior. How does a child's personality, background experiences, and his or her developing interest in STEM determine whether or not a particular learning environment will engage and motivate? I think if they are like, or they, I mean, they just don't talk, they just sit there. Within the same class, there are different personalities, strengths, identities, and levels of interest in STEM. Can the classroom paradigm of a combination of PBL and three-dimensional learning be effective for building on these strengths, for sparking interest and developing agency for learning and figuring things out? So there's two places now where no female blackbirds decided to build their nest, right? The road or the forest. What else did you notice? The question is, how can we reach all of the students, the creative and curious kids, and especially those who do not do well in traditional science? So I can show you where we are on our map right now. If you look where that path goes around the pond, this little thing that pokes out, it looks like a little gray square or rectangle in there. I found a few more redwood blackbirds. Whoa. In this series of videos, we'll showcase what happens when James, Sydney, and Ellen engage with a project featuring the three-dimensional design called for by the next generation science standards. What does transforming how we think about science teaching and learning affect the students and how does it impact the teacher's STEM identities? Red badges on their shoulders were popping up while they were making their call and he thought that that might be related in some way to their behaviors. Meet James. I am a rebel blackbird. James considers himself a scientist. He loves dinosaurs and feels a connection to his science interests. Do you think of yourself as a scientist sometimes? Yes, sometimes. Tell me about that. One day at science, well, I said a lot about climates in outer space and how like the climates got destroyed and made the ocean. James is creative, smart, and tells engaging stories. Oh, I left a piece of pizza outside one day and it was gone the next. I don't know what he ate it though. You thought maybe the Cardinal ate the pizza? I thought it was my sister who came up and ate it or, though. Or your sister. <laughs> James once wrote a fascinating 20-page tale. It was about the future, complete with inventions and an apocalypse. The entire story was one long sentence with no periods. James thinks outside the box. He makes up new rules that make sense to him. It's my bad face. I messed it up again. It means that I'm about to go angry. In a traditional classroom where memorization of facts and procedures is important, James would not only become bored, he might doubt himself. I have a mustache, a smile face, and I got two eyes. It means that I'm happy. NGSS and three-dimensional learning builds on student strengths because there are many dimensions to learning and the NGSS approach enables teachers to connect with students in a variety of ways. Demonstrate that you're ready to be friendly, play, and work cooperatively with others, or a signal to show that you need your space. This one is when I'm angry, like I have a man expression kind of. And this one's when I'm happy. The three dimensions allow students to associate meaning and doing and make use of many conceptual threads, which consequently increases their understanding. To answer the driving question, how does the red-winged blackbird's epaulette help it survive? Students asked questions, made predictions, and then went to a marsh to collect field observations. Oh, I see it too. You see it in there? Yeah. It is, it's right there in the branches. Where? About eye level, me? like just above where you're oh, headed. Oh, I see now. Juvenile markings. Oh, there it the goes. assignment energizes James's curiosity, and he makes queries and backs up his claims. All the birds we saw today was about around 20. Most of the birds we saw did not have epaulets. Only around, t only around like six had epaulets. Having space to ask questions and to pursue his own observations offers James the opportunity to be smart curious, and even indulge in fantasy a little. One blackbird was in that bush and then went to the top of that tree, like Superman. To explain how birds' physical and behavioral traits help them survive, the students had to figure out that some territories have more resources than others, an important and complex idea in ecology. Oh, 
We're supposed to pick somebody from our group and um, you know discuss where we saw the most of them, and then like go take them. Up there. Okay. Okay. I thought there was going to be a lot of birds in A1 because I saw a few in the field, but then when I got to A3, I noticed that there was tons more birds. We saw the nest somewhere around A3. It was like somewhere around A3. Like, yeah, A3, and it was like on the ground. It was on yeah, the ground. It was like right and around we, this area. Some of us thought like a predator came around and like ate the eggs or something and like left the nest down there. I noticed that it was made of twig and cat tail. And I remember that we were kind of talking about that yesterday, that that's what they're made of. So I think it was a red and black bird nest. We all probably thought that the cat tail was there to keep the eggs warm. Keep the eggs safe because the eggs are fragile. The students also engage in cross-cutting concepts. For example, thinking about ideas through the lens of structure and function. Two more observations now that you've talked. James. I've noticed that the bird has really sharp claws. James, pick somebody to agree with you, disagree, or have something different to say. I think I disagree on the next one because the claws don't really look sharp. Project-based learning engages students in real-world phenomena, asking meaningful questions, and culminates in a collaborative project, as in a model, a story or brochure, a poster, or even a community action. Combining 3D learning and project-based learning makes sense. Oh, I wonder if I can talk to you or not. I can, she's being friendly. As you see in this unit, James was able to relate to evidence that was important and still put his own spin on the explanation of the phenomena. And then something comes in the territory, they don't want it there. Unless uh, like something like a female comes in, then they um, then they become like boyfriend girlfriend. But if another male comes in, they battle, and that was probably the case over there because a redwood blackbird probably got that territory, and then a male probably invaded that territory. How are kids engaged in PBL able to succeed in STEM and see themselves in the future as scientists? And I saw one of them and they were trying to break something off that looks like they're breaking off to make a nest or something. How do scientists get evidence about birds? Because they observe um, what their act, what they're, how they're acting mm -hmm. and like they try and like uh, figure out what what it's thinking mm -hmm. but by only looking at what they're doing. We saw in this video that James, a student who may have become disinterested in STEM in a traditional setting, comes alive. Walking down, and there was one in the front, just, like chasing it, and then the one in the front was like, Squeeze! Transforming how we go about teaching science not only benefits kids, but changes teachers and the classroom community. You're supposed to get as much information as you can about that animal and then research the stuff you need. Uh -huh. And then you put it on a piece of paper and then you show some other people or other scientists what you found. When we think about learning science as enabling students to figure out why events happen in the natural world, more students like James develop agency for their own learning and see themselves as scientists. <laughs>